Hello everybody! Today I'm going to be making Big Soft Ginger Cookies. Now this is a recipe that in the past I've only made at Christmas time, so that's why I'm making it now. But also I haven't made this recipe in quite a few years since I stopped eating um, flour and sugar for the most part. But it's the holidays and I want to share this recipe with you. Back in the day, this was my most requested cookie among my friends and I refused to make it for them except at Christmas time. And since I don't make cookies anymore, I thought I would release this recipe out into the wild. I do not remember where I got it. Um, I've had it for about 15 years. I did a Google search and I couldn't find the exact recipe, so I'm not sure where it came from. And back when I attained this recipe, the internet wasn't like the internet we know today. So there's an off chance I didn't get it from the internet. In any case, we're gonna make some big soft ginger cookies today. And I hope that you take this recipe and you make it at home and that you fall in love with them just like my friends did. Among the tools that you'll need, you'll need measuring cups and measuring spoon, an assortment of size of bowls, perhaps a stand mixer, but this recipe can be made with just a wooden spoon and a bowl if you like. You'll also need a spatula to wipe down that mixing bowl. You'll need a cookie sheet with a sill pad. You'll need a cookie sheet with a sill pad or parchment paper. And you'll need a cookie rack. One or two, depending on how many cookies you plan to make. A good tool to have is a portion scoop. That's it for the materials you're gonna need for this recipe. So let's hit the countertop and make some cookies. Two and a half cups of flour, two teaspoons of ground ginger, one teaspoon of baking soda. Baking soda is going to be the leavening ingredient in this recipe. The activation ingredient is going to be the molasses. An important thing to know about when you're cooking cookies and using baking soda is that you should use the dough as soon as possible because the baking soda's leavening action will decrease over time. You can always put the dough in the refrigerator and that will hinder the activation for later use. Using baking soda causes the dough to expand and makes for a more light texture in your cookie. A quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Now, if you like cinnamon, you could double that because I have it to begin with. A half a teaspoon of ground cloves and a quarter teaspoon of salt. Now you can mix these together in there and then we're gonna go ahead and sift these ingredients together. Sifting is passing one or more ingredient through a wire mesh or sieve to remove or separate out lumps, combine the ingredients, and to aerate the ingredients. Don't forget to preheat your oven to 375 degrees. Go ahead and set that aside. The next step is to fit your mixer with a paddle. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna cream together three quarters of a cup of margarine and a half a cup of white sugar. Put that in there. Now, if you're using margarine, make sure that you've taken it out of the refrigerator plenty of time in advance so that it can be soft. You want it to be about that soft because you want it to be easy to cream with the sugar, especially if you're gonna be doing this by hand and you don't plan on using a stand mixer at all. I don't usually use margarine at all and this is the only exception because whenever I found the initial recipe, it called for it and I have made it with butter and it does impact the texture. Margarine, one of the reasons I don't use margarine is because it's a hydrogenated oil and those have been proven to be unhealthy to consume. However, this recipe calls for margarine and margarine has a different water to fat ratio than butter. So it's going to make a big impact in your recipe. Just like if your recipe called for shortening instead of butter, you're going to get a different texture in your baked good if you swap them back and forth. What you want to find is a margarine that's blended for baking and that is at least 75% fat. Now, baking is far more of a science than cooking, and I'm not going to uh, give you any ratios beyond this or anything because while I did have a baking segment in culinary school where I learned all the baking stuff, that was not my primary focus, even though I am quite good at baking. So that's my word on margarine. I do not recommend margarine when you're doing any cooking, 
like on a stove top. In baking, it's fine in occasionally and in small quantities, just like, just like anything. So use margarine for this recipe and don't feel guilty about it. I don't. So we're gonna cream this together until it becomes light and fluffy. Hold on to your hat. Creaming is working two or more ingredients, typically butter and sugar, together vigorously to form a creamy paste in order to incorporate air into a mixture. Scrape it down, especially if you're using a smaller amount of ingredients. Now that looks about as light and fluffy as maybe I desire. The next step is to beat in one egg and then stir in water and a quarter cup of molasses. So we'll start with the one egg. And molasses. Now you probably saw with my molasses that there was a piece of plastic in there. Had it worked out properly, I think I had a hole in the plastic. Had it worked out properly, none of it would have gotten into the cup and I could have just pulled that out and squeezed the molasses out of the saran wrap and then I wouldn't have had to have to clean this because cleaning molasses out of things is kind of a pain in the butt. Now it's time to gradually stir in the sifted ingredients until the ingredients form a dough. There is one garnish element to this that I did not uh, mention in the ingredient list, and that is sliced candied ginger, which is essentially ginger that's been rolled in sugar and dried. So what you wanna do is take a piece and cut it into about five slices. And then these, as you'll see, will go on top of the cookie. So we'll set that aside. Now, in addition, you'll also want a couple tablespoons of sugar because once we portion and roll out the cookies, we'll roll it in sugar before we put the garnish on and before we bake it. So we'll portion these first. Okay, this would be a fun project, part of the project if you had kids and you wanted to bake cookies with them. Just roll it. And uh, usually the recipe calls for it to be about the size of a walnut. This may be a little bigger than a walnut. Okay. Also a fun part of the cookie baking experience if you have kids. Now when I put the ginger on, I like to put the cut side up and then you just push them down just gently. Now these should take about eight to 10 minutes to bake. I would suggest setting your alarm for about eight minutes and then checking on them every 30 seconds. Now these took about 10 minutes and I'm gonna take them out now. You'll see that they may not look completely done, but they will have a little bit of carryover cooking and then they should be fine. So you wanna take these out and leave them on the pan for about two minutes and then transfer them to a cooling rack. The cookies are done. Let's take a look and see that they're very, very soft inside. Mm. The texture really long time since I've had real cookies. Now the texture of the inside might have, might remind you of like an undercooked dough. It's not the case, it's fine. This is how they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be soft. Mm. 
I'm gonna watch me eat cookies like an animal. So that is my big soft ginger cookies. I hope you enjoyed the video today. I hope you try to make these at home. You will not regret it, especially if you like the taste of gingerbread and the holidays. Thank you for watching my video today. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing for future content. Have a happy holidays if it's still the holidays. And as always, have a wonderful day. For this recipe, it's a baking recipe, so you're gonna... I just made a batch of chocolate chip cookies and there's a little flour left in my things.